Hey everybody, Larry Lawton here, and I am back. This is about Baby Driver, the movie. First of all, let, let me start the video by saying, first of all, please, if you have not gotten vaccinated, please get vaccinated. Just do it. I mean, I'm reading numbers that are off the charts. I know people with COVID, uh, and, and I want you not to be sick. I really do. I, I love what I do. I love entertaining and talking to people and doing videos like this, so... Please get vaccinated. Just do it, man. It's not a big fucking deal. It's really not. So let's do that. All right. A lot of people asked for it. You know I listen to comments. And I want to do this video, Baby Driver, because I watched the movie again. Before I get started, please check me out on member of the program, YouTube, Patreon. Check my book out, Gangster Redemption. Going nuts as it should. Uh, it's just a wild ride. Everybody who gets it just loves it. But let's enjoy this review. Uh, let me give you a little bit of background on Baby Driver if you haven't watched it. It's about a young kid who, who had to pay back a debt and he becomes a driver. That's kind of a little bit of, the, of the, the part that I'm a little bit confused about, but we'll get into that in a bit. And we're going to go over some scenes in a movie. But the movie is about a criminal syndicate. They rob shit and they, and they get away with it. They're well organized. Uh, they got a getaway driver, uses different people. All of that stuff really made me think, hey, these guys are good. Or who thought of the movie are good. So however you want to do that. I mean, you can look at it either way. So I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to show you a little bit of a movie, Baby Driver. Now, whenever I see little scenes like this, I laugh. Like, you don't think anybody would notice this shit on the streets? Listen, the best thing I did as a criminal was be inconspicuous. I was fit right in with the natural landscape of things. I didn't, uh, come here, three, walk in. You gotta be looking, like, what the hell's going on? And, and if there's any cop or anything, there goes your movie, as I used to say on GTA. It's over. Now, here's the thing. He's got headphones on. If I'm running this crew, I'd fucking rip those headphones right out of his head. How could you hear what's going on around you? You want all your senses on high alert. Not fucking in a music video or a music track. Or whatever calms him down, I don't give a fuck. I want to know that you could hear the cops coming. You could hear somebody scream, Hey, what are you doing? Move the car. Whatever the fuck it is. I don't get that here. Explosion. He's just playing around. Did you see that? He never even heard the cops coming. That alone would make me fucking freak. I was such a control freak in robberies. Uh, I guess I'm a control freak in everything I do. But meaning... I made sure I had all my loose ends tied up, and that's why I was one of the best that ever did it. Uh, and I, I hate to sound like a brag, and I'm not. I was just good at what I did. That's why I could do it without hurting people and doing the way I did it. And again, I want to emphasize this. This is not right. What I tell is not right about my form of life. I'm just reviewing a movie from a guy who was the best. Now, if they were really a great team and had all the equipment, which they did, with that said, he would have headphones on to communicate with the people in the robbery or have headphones on communicating and listening into the police scanners. I mean, that was common. So this way, it would be easy for him to know what's going on when they're coming, not, hey, don't come out right now. He sees somebody walk by. You don't want to run out when the cops are driving by or there's a cop walking. You need all of that. That's true robbery skills. Not sit and listen to the fucking rock music. Here's my issue. How do you get to be some great getaway driver at 22? 23, whatever the fuck age he is in this thing. That's hard. Uh, don't get me wrong, I was a hell of a driver. But it was up into my, you know, 30 years old, 35, the best drivers I know 
aren't kids. It takes time, you gotta do a lot of driving, whether it's street driving or not. So they don't really give the background of how this kid became such a great driver. But I'll tell you what, the stunts in this are great. First of all, they got away from the store relatively unseen. Why are you driving like a fucking maniac and letting the fucking cops, they didn't know even know what car you left, I wouldn't think, unless somebody called it in that quick and that cop got that information, otherwise he's going to the bank and you just hit it like crazy. And it's not like he's in some high performance Mercedes SL500 or some shit. That was a cool move. I mean, these drivers, these stunt drivers are great. Come on guys, you gotta love that move. I mean, I love the thinking of this movie. That's what made this movie to me real good. Okay, when I saw this part of the movie, right in the beginning, I liked it, and I says, this is what smart people do. I always had a, you have either a car, like I used to switch the plates because I knew I wasn't seen, but if I was, or if there was something wrong, you'd have another stash car somewhere, and you could switch cars really quick, and split up. I mean, that's another thing, you don't bring four people into the car, or whatever. You split up. And that's what I used to do with my crew. But once you're in in this thing, this was a smart way, it was underneath, switch to another car, and they do their thing. I said, this is gonna be a good movie. Originally, right when that happened, the first few things I didn't like about the music and him not knowing what's going on, because that's what caught me right off the bat. But the excitement and the driving and all that made me say, this is gonna be a pretty good movie. Okay, you see the way they all went into one car? I wouldn't have did that. The other guys could have went to another car, could have had two cars, could have walked, could have done a lot of things. Get rid of everything, nobody knows who you are. I mean, you're all set that way. Uh, so those are the things I think I think would have done a little differently. Let's look at another scene. What is your name? Baby. Your name's Baby. B-A-B-Y, Baby. What's your name, Baby? It's really Miles, she finds that out in the movie. But baby, I, I kind of like that. I don't think they'd call me baby though. Maybe gorilla, but not baby. One more job and I'm done. One more job and we're straight. Now I don't think I need to give you this feature about what happens when you say no, how I could break your legs and kill everyone you love because you already know that, don't you? Yeah. And your uh, waitress girlfriend, she's cute. Let's keep it that way. There's a good part about the movie I like too, about Kevin Spacey knowing everything. Kind of reminded me of myself, uh, not his bullshit, you know, whatever he did wrong. I'm talking about as far as his criminal in the movie, and I think that's pretty cool, that he knew everything. And that's what a good, good boss or a good leader does. <laughs> Okay, now this, this scene in the movie, which I like, you know, they go through a few robberies, he tries to get out of the business. Obviously, that is the hardest thing to do in anything you do in, in this kind of stuff. But, you know what I really liked about it was the run through the shit and the cops and him running and listen to me, man, you couldn't have caught me at 22 years old either, man. I was a fucking, you know, a gazelle and no fucking fat cop in the world will catch my ass. You better, even any regular cop with all that bullshit on their belt and everything else, isn't catching Larry. Larry could fly, and, and Larry knew where he was going. I don't know what he knew in this thing, but at least the, this this run scene and shit was cool. I mean, but how many cops? First of all, there'd never be that many cops. Trust me, there wouldn't. Yes, they just did the big robbery in the post office, which is not a bad robbery either. And I even know people who robbed a money orders. Money orders were a big thing. They were hitting the travel agents back in my time. They would hit travel agents and get all their uh, money orders. And these people you would get money orders and you'd fucking be able to fill them out and do all the shit you want. 
So you'd be able to sell those. So they had them in increments already. So it was cash. But uh, you know, you had a ways to get rid of them and stuff. But that was always easy. That was the in advent of they had the uh, ca check cashing stores. So we even knew people owned those stores. So it was just the way it was. You know, when he was doing this scene and he had the, the one glasses that was broke and the one that was not, that, that had me laugh. I just throw those fucking things off. I mean, every time I saw him, I said, I could see that, 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 that. Just get rid of that shit. Blew me away. Okay, now you see him sliding down that escalator. The next time you're near an escalator, anywhere, look what's there. They have bumps in the middle. They have like things in the middle, so you can't do that. Because they know kids are gonna do that. Okay, what you just saw is true. If you ever see things that can break glass, it's like on the end of a knife, it's a little point. And you can actually punch it, and, and it pops into the glass, and it, it shatters the glass. So you could do that with a, with a screwdriver. You're easier to do with a Phillips head, to be honest, because of that point. Okay, you see what he did with punching that? That's not how it was done. You would take a screwdriver, usually a pretty thick screwdriver, we used to take a hammer, or even a big rock, and put that and smash it into the thing, and that breaks the cylinder, and then you just turn the screwdriver, and you can have it. Now, of course, it's broken out. If you ever saw that, and you did see those, you knew the car was a robbed car. But in the, at this point, that's how you punch it. They actually had tools that you actually put it in, screw it, and pull out the, the whole column thing. And that would also loosen the, the steering wheel, because now they have the column locks put on it. So even when you punched it, you couldn't turn it, but those would pull those out as well. So yeah, you know, it's easy to rob a car. That, that, that shit made me laugh, but he did it right. Fucking get us out of here. This is your next your fault. Hey, listen, whether you like it or not, this girl is a badass bitch. I mean, she just come out with a death wish. That's a death wish. You know you're gonna be killed. Now this guy, this guy was a former Wall Street guy. He got into drugs and he didn't become a criminal and that's what does happen a lot of times. But he had the balls to do it to begin with. I don't know how he was a Wall Street guy. I don't know, he would have threw somebody off the fucking, you know, 50th floor in, in, in Manhattan. Great fucking scene. Just a great scene, that getaway scene. And then at the end, I mean, obviously the scene is, you know, in the uh, parking garage, and that's a pretty wild scene. So here, at the end of the movie, they have this big scene, which you can see, and again, I don't think you could be shot in the knee, shot here, uh, and keep surviving all this crazy shit. Obviously, that stunt driving in that fucking, in that garage, indoor garage, was amazing. I, I, I get dizzy going in those fucking things, and you keep going up. I, I just get dizzy. Uh, but that guy did that backwards. That stunt driver is amazing who really did that. I mean, the stunt driving here has just been great, obviously. I think it's been great, and, and it was a great, you know, ending. Now the ending here, yeah, he kills him. He gets her, you know, the girl and the guy, you know, the guy like, you know, did this to his ears. He wanted to kill him. 
He would have just fucking shot him in the head. He wouldn't have got his hearing messed up temporarily. But anyway, they had to show it because he was into the music. The kid was a, almost like an autistic kid, uh, but hell of a smart kid. Uh, there's no question about that. And knew it is shit. And then at the end, they're going. And obviously gives himself up. Now, they did this. It was based out of Georgia, which, you know, I robbed in Georgia. So I kind of got a, a kind of a weird uh, feeling on that. But doing their whole movie, and then he gives up. It was never his fault. He's got a good heart. Always had. Always will. With regard to counts 1 through 19 and count 21, I hereby sentence the defendant to 25 years in the federal penitentiary, subject to a parole hearing after five years served. And then here he is in prison, and they all talk about him. Listen, do you know how many cops were killed and all that kind of shit? You think that guy would get out of prison in five years? That guy wouldn't get out in 50 fucking five years. I mean, honestly. I don't care what you think and what he did. He was involved in a robbery ring. Fucking more dead bodies in that movie than a lot. I mean, just all the cops the guy killed. Uh, not him, per se. I mean, the one really he killed was the guy who was an asshole who, you know, they, they impaled him on that, on that uh, uh, rot iron, that rot iron. That was a cool scene. Jamie Foxx got killed. Went right through his fucking chest. Pretty good fucking scene. I mean, they did that one pretty good. I got to give him credit on that one. A anyway, but they, uh, at the end, and then he goes to jail, and he gets out in five years, and it's like, are you kidding me? Killing cops, killing it. They had to make the movie where it was like, fun. I did love the heart on the kid. He took care of his stepdad, uh, his foster dad, I think it was. I'll tell you what, it was pretty cool the way he took care of that old guy. And the old guy had a heart and knew the kid was a good kid, uh, which I do believe in. You guys know that. I, I think about young people all the time and I think about them being a good kid. I really do. Just the way I am. And uh, I really enjoyed that part of it. And he had a heart and morals and the music kind of made me want to go out and listen to my music, which I do. I listen to my Paul Simon and Elton John and all that kind of shit that I like. But I hope you like this movie, everybody. It was a good movie. I loved it. Second time I watched it. You guys wanted me to review it. It's got a lot of uh, excitement. It's an action-packed film, a couple hours. A little unrealistic, obviously. Uh, but most movies are. It's not the most realistic movie I saw. But it was a great movie. Enjoy. Listen, if you like it, keep commenting. You know I read the comments. Let me know what you want, to, want me to review. Have a great day. Make good choices. Enjoy all this stuff. Listen, get vaccinated. I always say that again now. And you know what? Let's get by this and let's all have a great time. Live life. Stay well. Make good choices. Have a great day.